Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Devon Gunsmith Diaries and today we're focusing on the action, assembly and disassembly of the Browning B25 based Marukus and Brownings made in Japan by Maruku under license. So the B25A1 series had a retained forend with the uh, Japanese iterations. They had a more common, what we now understand as a more standard uh, forend system. Uh, the Invicta common ejector system. But today we're just going to focus on the action itself. So let's get into it. If you enjoy the content, don't forget, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Okay, so stock removal is very straightforward. It's a round slotted long reach. And just simply undo it. Right, here we are. So this is your standard Maruku slash Browning coil spring system and uh, has the common locking system at the bottom which I can't now operate <laughs> with the hold off as well okay so we're just going to release these need a block or something just to release those take the pressure off There we go. Do with a little bit of a zoom there, couldn't we really guys? Maybe, I don't know, yeah. So first things first. Go simple as simple. You notice there's some standard pins and roll pins as well uh, to release everything. The uh, cocking bars operate these side links. Um, let's get into it. So here's the original Browning B25A1 action and you see how close it is to the modern Browning and Maruku iterations.
You have to center this safety. There's like a little gearbox H in there. You have to select it to center like so to release it and it will jump forward <laughs> every time <laughs> so it's got like a like a gear selector on the manual like an h it needs to be adjusted slightly to the center there it goes there. and that's because there's a there's a little selector block there that's a little bit sticky on this one, so we'll fix that up. There, it's got a little detente spring in there as well. Right, remove the strikers with these two pins here. And again, need a block with a bit more space to it. So there we go. Spring on the bottom one.
there's that little roll pin we need to release and then there's a there's a little spring section in there too You'll have noticed this is done in no particular order. Right, finger over that and release. Tiny little roll pin. This quite often gets full of crud. Uh, and impacts. There's a little spring inside here which is quite often full of dirt and it, I think it is today, possibly. Yeah, it's there. I can just about show it to you. It's stuck in there at present, uh, but it's there nonetheless. There's a little piston there that connect into it. Now, you need to get the top lever spring released. So occasionally I go for one of these kind of screwdrivers and uh, gives me the opportunity to use these. They're not a very good reach often, so I don't tend to use them too much. And my thumb just stop in that, slow in that movement of that spring. I don't like the chunky handle, gotta, gotta be honest. I prefer a smaller handle that I can just spin off like this. A little bit of rust in that, I think. And there it goes. Released as an assembly. Yeah, dirty as. Right, so now you can see the whole of this pillar on this system, as opposed to a Beretta, which just has a, a top lever that connects in. This has a a pillar that goes through the whole bottom section and interlocks. Uh, so I could actually use the bolt at the bottom to indicate that they're linked. There you go. Okay, so that's the cam operating. That's it out of engagement there. And then push that back and you will need a bit of a tap. Now, I will generally use a piece of brass, but you must pull that back first. On this one, it seems retained. Usually they draw straight out, but uh, or certainly they have in the past. So you just tap it out by the magic of YouTube TV. I've actually taken it out, give it a good old walloping, cleaned it up and put it back in again to make it easy for the tube. I'm terrible at I tell you all the secrets. There you go. So underneath, put that back. That's the cam as it is for the operation of the top lever. And for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why. There seems to be some tension on this. It's not allowing it out. I forget. Maybe there's a reason for that. I'm pretty sure that this cam is supposed to swing out. Uh, there's a little bit of leverage. I think it's just seized in there I can't pretty sure that's on a little swivel and it pops up I have to be honest it's been a while since I did one of these I'm gonna lubricate it up when you do hundreds of different jobs on different guns 
it's surprising how quickly you forget and you just it goes into your basic database of things you need to do. I've got a feeling that swings up or frees up somehow. I'm going to very lightly tap it. Bear with. There you go. Right. Now, can you see how that is indexing up on its? I'm trying to find the angle. How it's lifting the cam out. That's what I was saying should happen. But in this case, it's just so stiff. It wasn't wanting to do it. it hasn't been taken apart in a good while. Anyway. I will persevere. Very, when I tap things, it is very controlled. Otherwise, you wouldn't use your own screwdrivers, for example. Just give it a little tap. This may not make it into the edit, I don't know. And you can see that it's moving forward. It's a little bit stiff. There it is. Here it goes. Here it goes. There it is. That is pretty mucky. I'm going to have to free that off. That is supposed to be a bit looser than that. For sure. So there's your, there's your pillar with all the recesses to allow for the pins and whatnot to fire through. That's That's overly stiff. See if I can free that up a little bit. Ah, oh, somebody's done a bit of a job on this. I'll have to leave that, but there's a screw there and it just needs freeing off a tiny bit. Cleaning up so that it manoeuvres freely. Shouldn't be that tight. That is super tight. Anyway, there it is. That gives you the access to the whole of the frame and all of this is a solid frame in the... Uh, the B25 range. There's the little gate I was talking about. Um, it's a solid lump. The only thing I won't remove is the hinge pin because it's fine as it is. I'm not going to mess with that for now. And that's it. Oh, there's one little addition. I shan't remove it in this occasion because it's a pain to get to, as you can see. And it doesn't want to undo anyway. I'm not going to disturb the safety spring. No point, because it's actually basically a part. So that's disassembly. Done. Okay, so... It's still quite stiff. So there's the cam adapter. That's how it gets inserted, and then it should just flick down. It's a bit stiff at the moment, so I'm going to pop it in an ultrasonic. It'll be off camera. I can't keep showing every single thing. And you can get an ultrasonic for very little money on eBay and any of the other uh, online auction sites. Just to get all the muck and rust and stuff out of that, free that up and hopefully undo that screw, which is a bit, has had a bit of a tension in the past. There's also some wear marks on this, which I need to probably polish out a little bit. It's causing a bit of undue friction, I think, there. Um, otherwise, again, that action just needs flushing, cleaning out by whatever means. There's, there's a, bits of dirt and stuff collecting in here. Um, so by whatever means you wish, you could, if you're out in the outback and all you've got is kerosene, diesel or petrol, you could put this in a plastic bottle, give it a shake around, let it soak in there. Um, that would clean it up nicely. Um, same with these parts. Potentially less so with these, but it would be a, an advantage. Certainly if you're having um, problems with um, changeover, this benefits from a good clean. And... Um, it's interesting, I do get a bit of pushback on the question of lubrication. 
and I use this fairly well, very frequently. And there is a bit of resistance in the community about it. Um, I personally, because I live very within a mile of uh, assault flats, and a lot of these guns do end up inevitably being dual purpose sporting guns, get used on the foreshore and it's salt water and they do get dropped in the water. I've seen it happen. I've had them returned to me caked with um, shale clay with and rusty. Um, I do favour using a thick grease. However, this customer has asked for it to be uh, not clegged in grease because he's using it um, in a dry scenario. He's basically just using it for uh, sporting clays. So this is also in common with the B25A1 I serviced a long time ago now. Um, and he wanted just light oil. This is an option in your full service. If if not offered, if not asked, I will grease it up because I don't know where it's going to end up. But if it's only for clays or trap or I quite, of, quite often won't. It depends what its discipline is going to be used for. But in this case, it's just light oiling and, re, and reassembling. I will put some grease in this channel because if it's being used in live sporting water gets in through the bottom the slide comes underneath and into the firing tunnels the, the striker pin tunnels then you do want to protect this area by putting some grease in um, although you know rotational stuff can be done with oil it's again it's a customer's choice. So I'm going to put this in some of these parts in either solvent or the ultrasonic. This is going to be popped in the ultrasonic because this has had a solvent bath and it's still very stiff. That should just ease. I should better push that down with my finger, not having to grip something. It's it's just that stiff, unfortunately. So that's going in the ultrasonic. I'm going to check this bolt, make sure that there's no undue wear on that. Um, doesn't appear to be in a bad state. There's some slight wear there, but nothing to worry about. Anyway, after cleaning, we'll go back into reassembly. Okay, <clears throat> so I've just soaked this in the ultrasonic and 
just want to run some acetone over it as acetone will absorb moisture. It was hot, so it was obviously clean. It still pulls out a little bit of the old grease, which is good. Just to ensure that they, well, everything is truly clean. This application, it's uh, oil only grease where it needs to be. There's always somebody who disagrees with you, I find. <laughs> um, as I've said before in other videos, it's down to the customer's requirements, whether I use grease or oil or a combination. As a lot of the uh, shooting around here is done on salt water marshes and the like, then inevitably salt water ingress will happen. In which case I'll use the lithium molly more liberally. Uh, it is just what it is guys. There's no point uh, having a strong opinion about it. If all you do is shoot clays, an oil, a light oiling is all that's needed. Still a little bit of persistent dirt, but it's way cleaner than it was. Right. Let's get that grease together. Now. We will go into paroxysms of hatred for the channel. That does need grease and it's to prevent it, it uh, transferring in the in all of there in the actual tunnel. It just needs a bit in there. 
Right, so having squeezed it out, wipe off the excess. Also, if you're doing this at home, uh, and I've done this before, you know, during an application of grease, if you have some mineral oil or something like that, you can use it to, uh, I'm just going to push this in here. This normally would go down on its own, but for some reason it's a bit tight on this particular gun. Slip, there you go. So that's now retained. So it seems a bit tight. This will want a bit of grease on it too. Because the slide goes in on there. Yeah, you can assemble this whole thing with loads of grease. Um, and use either an oil or a solvent to clean it up again. Nothing wrong with that. I like to just wet up the surfaces to give me a better chance of getting it back together again quickly and easily. All right, so that slot engages with the cam. If you pull it down, you can see it will allow you to slide that in. And it, this is a tight fit, so I was concerned that there would be problems. But this is a tight fit, so it's not, not a problem at all. all right. Pull it down. Ah, this is me resting it. All right, pull it down. Slide that in back into place, which it does now freely because it's not full of rubbish. And then just ease that back into place. And then your lock works better that way. Obviously, there's a little Allen key there, a grub screw, so that's the locator point. This wants a little bit of grease again. Not huge amounts, just to make, whoops, slip out my fingers. You could use oil if you want. Just drops in around there like that. As you see there, see how that goes there? Right, a little bit of grease or oil. I will drop a bit of oil in there because it will just flow better. And there you go. This is so neatly engraved that when you actually do this, Ah, next, find your old Allen key that you were using earlier, Paul. All right. I haven't got, I can't find my long ones, which is annoying.
screw to pop them back in again I just find it more effective 
it. So just make sure that these are ready to go in. But first, strikers. Little bit of grease. Obviously, the slot <clears throat> is to sit at the bottom because that's where that locating striker pin is. Again, you can use something as simple as a small Allen key just to hold it in place while you're uh, selecting your pins. Make sure you get the right ones. These are all the same size. Just checking. So these should actually go in fairly easy. Uh, and on the final part, they have a little bit of knurling on them so they can just pinch the last bit. And that doesn't foul all of that assemblage. And the same again with the other side, only in this case it's the up, up facing up on the pin. And they sometimes slightly enlarge one side over the other. So you can see there's knurling on one side only. And drop that in there. That's not the one. That is, there we go. Little brass drift, which has disappeared from my sight. There we go. Strikers back in, check them. Wipe the excess grease off them. No problem. So you can use some of that uh, very light oil. I can't remember the name of it. I probably should uh, put links below, shouldn't I? Let's be honest, probably should. So if I want to secure this, I can pop that assembly back in, like so. But I'm not going to at the moment. I prefer to have it slack for a minute. And these need assembling as well. Now it's easy to get these the wrong way around. Ask me how I know. <laughs> right, so at this point to drop the uh, cocking rods in. Again, a little bit of grease on those bearing surfaces. If you want a dry install, I can do a dry install. I just prefer to know in my local, the locale. And you can mix these up by the way too. I'm banging the camera with my head, that's always a good start. Okay. You align that circular hole there. Time to have a grease on this pin. Ooh, I've not got it right. Need 
to align that a bit better. For the striker. Sorry, don't think I'm on the camera, am I? I'll use that one, it's not what I was looking for, but... It just slides in and all of a sudden it goes just like a lot of these things. There's a flat on these so you've got to orientate it to make sure that the flat allows the cocking rod to slide back or indeed sits where it should sit. Just in the tie bit, there you go. Right, straighten that out to allow the flat to slide down like so. It's difficult to do with your camera in the way. Right, so that's the one side done. And now obviously you can index that up as if it was firing. Like so. Rinse and repeat. Like so. Sometimes one side seems more cack handed than the other. I don't know why that is. I think it's obviously to do with the operator. But we all favour left and right, don't we? So that's approximately in position.
So spring back in, top spring assembled. That's the hold off. Done. Now we need to get into the <clears throat> trigger group. Just get that roll pin started because it's a pain to get your fat little fingers into. <laughs> and then fiddle around. I'm going to get this raised up so I can get underneath it. There you go. like so. There's probably a better way to do this, I'm sure, but based on the time available, just give that a whack. Because I use brass because it doesn't damage, obviously, once it's got a chance of holding. There you go. Yeah, that's good side that's the issue all right all right okay so now i can offer that up with the spline side on the outside there you go partially in give it a tap and it does go in already there you go. just take it home otherwise that'll catch and then drop this one in and align the same but with the spring working constantly against you <laughs> probably got it the wrong way around a little roll pin so you need to feel the roll pin There it is. There's a taper, so you've got to find a taper. It's never always the straight, most straightforward thing to do. And try not to block your view as per usual. Trusty thin Allen key, just to hold that in place briefly. I can't find my hat me <laughs> I've got a brass mallet I just can't find it
Right, that's retained sufficiently. There you go. Drop of oil in there. And there, and there, and there. Work that in. Okay. So a drop of oil in there. We'll work that out. I don't really want to take this out, to be honest with you. It's been sorted out so once it comes out I've got a little ball bearing to bounce around there you go set it at half halfway drop it down in there and on the wrong side safe and as you can see it pulls it back to remove it from the sears and then it brings it forward to come on to the sears so there we go okay so i'm off the blinking view again I can't get my head in the way. That's the problem. Pull that back. Pop that onto something. So support it, give it a gentle tap in. You want to make sure it sits both sides evenly. It doesn't foul, foul the spring. If it doesn't, it's fine. As you can see there. Okay. Wipe down. Give it a wipe down. Now on the on the Maruku Brownings. It's got a keyway there. Just slide it in and it locates on the keyway. Something like that. Others have pins and all sorts of silly things. It's not aligned, it won't go back in the stock. There we go. Now, I do like to put a bit of grease on these. It just stops them graunching on each other. But it's only a light amount. As I say, this is not heavily greased because it's by request. Right, so on this particular type, because they're not retained, they're a little bit more fun. Uh, right, so I'll just release these sears. There you go. And also they've got a nice hole in the middle for you to manually click them back with a screwdriver, which I quite like. Oops, sorry, miles off. I'm looking at the job, sorry. So you can, using your trusty homemade spring tensioner, if you hold it correctly, you can tension it like so. You can then get the tailpiece in and drop that straight in. Boom, there you go. Lovely jubbly. It's not always that easy, nor was that straightforward, but it is in theory possible at least to compress that spring like so, and then just pop it in place. So there you go, guys. And now 
you see where how that lock also indexes back the uh, auto safety etc etc and the uh, inertia weight which is also your Sears indicator there you see but it pulls it out of the way right so when your gun, gun is cocked this is where you can use these I can manually cock it back like so hand in the way and I had pull right I'll cock it this way for your viewing pleasure there you go okay so it can be cocked greasy right so fully cocked back like so and obviously then this is able to be prepared for dropping into the barrel I can remove that excess grease that I put in there and you can see that's a lot less greasy which is one of my uh, methods so this is how you'd have it if you had a if you made a request to have it not greased up if you're not on the sedges and you're not working in the wet on game days you're going to want it to be uh all right there's an alignment issue there rookie error see that there you need to get it dead center it'll be center on both sides which i believe it is so that will push over. There's a sufficient slack. As long as it's the even amount both sides. And I'm trying to get that and go in there. That's difficult to do. There's a little bit there. Can you see? Sticking out and it indexes across the other side the same. As long as it's even, it's good. Safety, off safety. So, and then right, dry firing. No, 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 don't dry fire. How else am I going to show you it? How to do it? Anyway. So, there it is, guys. That's the Japanese Maruku Browning B25 action hasn't changed a great deal apart from the coil springs otherwise it's the same so that's it guys reassembled if you like my content don't forget subscribe if you're not I get at least a thousand views but I still haven't got a thousand subscribers yet so please like and subscribe. Thank you guys.